Sarah Palin called them Obamacare death panels, and she was vilified for it. Now, four years later, are a growing number of Democrats proving her right, like this one? Former De Democratic National Committee Chairman Howard Dean, he's worried about the panel set up to decide how much health care you and I are entitled to, and so is this list of congressional Democrats. They want the panel repealed. Sarah Palin joins us now in the hot seat with her first reaction. Governor, thank you so much. Were you surprised when you see the likes of Howard Dean and other Democrats jumping on board saying, hey, the governor was right? Well, it was a pleasant surprise, and I don't think that we should uh, condone them for finally trying to jump off the Obama train wreck that is uh, coming down the pike here. I, I appreciate that they acknowledge it. Of course, there are death panels in there. But uh, the important thing to remember is that's just one aspect of this atrocious, unaffordable, uh, cumbersome, burdensome, evil policy of Obama's, and that is Obamacare. And what do you think their motive is for coming on to the, the, your side, saying, hey, maybe we should slow down with this law? Well, it's in black and white in the law it, it, that uh, there will be rationing of health care. They, they couldn't go forever in not acknowledging that or they would look like complete buffoons and they would be uh, deemed incompetent having not read the law to understand that uh, death panels are a part of this atrocity. So uh, I think it was just a matter of time and the 22 Democrats who have now acknowledged uh, part of the problem of, of Obamacare, again, as I say, they should be uh, thanked and not uh, condo condemned. And um, I, I think that uh, as more and more of our uh, congressmen and women uh, actually read the law and as more of us bring to light more things in the 20,000 pages of rules and regulations accompanying Obamacare, more of them will try to jump off the train wreck that's coming. All right. Well, let, let, let's change speeds a little bit here. The White House now in its third week calling scandals fake and phony. Governor, Anything phony about four dead Americans in Benghazi or IRS um, targeting conservative groups? And, they, for, and frankly, in the, the NSA snooping. Yeah, I'm still disgusted with the mainstream media having opportunity to do some follow-up questions and really pinning down our president and asking him, because as you point out, this is the third week running now where he still poo-poos the Benghazi scandal and the um, government snooping on us scandals. And nobody's asking him, which scandals are you characterizing as being phony? And I wish that the press would do a better job at really pinning him down and making him answer to the people whom he is serving, what does he mean when he says that these things that we are so so concerned about he, he poo poos them and, and acts like it's no big darn deal yeah and another topic uh, yesterday president obama had his first solo press conference in many many months take a listen to what he had to say about transparency listen we have to strike the right balance between protecting our security and preserving our freedoms so more than one founding father said those willing to give up, give up a little bit of security, a little bit of freedom for security deserve neither. Your thoughts? There is no balance at all in this struggle for security and, and liberty when we have an illustration going on today with our government having lied about it, our government um, actually spying on innocent Americans and gathering data on us based on our communications, which really is a violation of our Fourth Amendment. There's no balance there at all. That is that is stomping, trampling a boot on the neck of our liberty. That's not balance. Yeah, I, I hold this in my pocket all the time, Governor. It's my pocket constitution. The Fourth Amendment specifically says um, you, you have to have probable, probable cause. That two, Section 215 of the Patriot Act actually says you can't even surveil U.S. citizens unless they're contacting someone overseas and you have probable cause that they're after a, uh, they're involved in some sort of terrorist activity. I think they, they're blowing this thing you know, out of the water. They're shredding this thing yet again. Well, not only that, but the messenger then, he who told us what was going on in that department uh, that is uh, resulting in our finally awareness of the government spying on us, and that's Edward Snowden, he's the bad guy in all of this. You know, they want to shoot the messenger instead of dealing with the problem. The problem is a trampling on our liberty, a trampling on our Fourth Amendment rights. Yeah, and at one point he was asked, I believe by Chuck Todd, is, is uh, is he going to be a, a whistleblower now? You've called him a, a, a traitor in the past. I thought it was an interesting uh, exchange going back and forth. Before we run out of time, th there's been a rift going back and forth between Senator Rand Paul and New Jersey Governor Chris Christie. Um, where, where are you on that? I mean, uh, Rand Paul's the, the, the true libertarian there. Chris Christie says maybe it's, he's too libertarian for our good. Where, where do you fall on this? 
Where am I? I'm, I'm on Team Rand. Uh, Rand Paul understands. He gets a whole notion of don't tread on me government, whereas Chris Christie is for big government and, um, you know, trying to uh, go along to get along in so many respects. And, you know, some people look at him as, oh, man, he's, he's a governor who goes rogue. And now, you know, he's got a, a shtick going there where he's got a, a YouTube videographer following around kind of right. these set up situations sometimes so that he can be seen as uh, perhaps a little bit avant-garde and, and going rogue on things. But no, Chris Christie's for more government and his right. record proves that. Whereas Rand Paul, with that healthy libertarian streak that we need more of in our politicians, uh, Team Rand Paul. Amen to that, Governor. Governor Sarah Palin, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you. It's a pleasure.